There were a lot of TV movies made by various channels in the 1980s, so how do you make yours stand out? Well, if you don't have any quality, then you do something controversial, and such is the case with this film, where they gave it a raunchy title, but didn't actually include any nudity. The film starts off with a prostitute who has a thing for videotaping her clients, getting bumped off by a masked intruder. And it all centres around a blackmail plot she was involved in, and when a roommate comes back a bit earlier than the killer expected, they're forced to make off, leaving behind one of the tapes, which then becomes the central focus of the plot. And the two main characters are Lieutenant Thompson and Sarah Dutton, who's an up-and-coming DA. And their investigation into the murder brings them into contact with a number of powerful men. This ranges from a judge who's a bit too enthusiastic about denying the lieutenant a search warrant, to the police chief, who you know is corrupt from the very minute he appears in the film. You've also got a plot with the roommate trying to auction the tape with the help of an adult film producer. And while some interested parties are prepared to spend a large amount of money to get their hands on the compromising footage, there's someone else out there who resorts to more direct methods. Another TV movie you consider familiar is this thriller has imaginative murders and a mystery killer who wears two masked outfits, but on reflection the pacing is too ponderous with all the exciting parts saved for the final half hour. The plot is based on a novel by Mary Higgins Clark and set in a Parisian chateau, despite a Japanese theme present throughout the film, straight from the opening credits to martial arts training halls and oriental curtains. The story is rather basic with subplots that ultimately go nowhere and characters that seem to exist only to lengthen the runtime to 90 minutes. An actress named Layla is driven to insanity by creepy phone calls, which strains the relationship with her sister Elizabeth and her husband Ted. Layla is visibly upset, so when a scuba diver drowns the actress in a nearby lake, everyone assumes she's simply run away, except for Elizabeth who's determined to uncover the truth. After a slow burning opening, there's a tense sequence where the kendo mass killer eliminates a woman who's got too close to the truth. Then the murderous Judy finally reveals herself and a typical jealous lover motive to another woman she tries to silence. The climax has Elizabeth stand in for a dead sister in a movie production and Judy take a stunt diver's place to make one final attempt on the heroine's life. What should have been an exciting ending is instead anticlimactic with gloomy underwater action and a weak resolution that has other people come to the rescue. This TV movie from the late 1980s is difficult to find, hence the average quality broadcast scan with mediocre sounds and dark scenes made even gloomier. It's a novel idea that takes an often used premise and gender flips it, and the plot has a mysterious killer in a blonde wig target male strippers at the title nightclub. The opening murder, ultimately the only one, sets the tone with the assailant using an unusual artist tool as a slashing weapon. Lieutenant Flannery is a tough homicide cop and the prime suspect a female PR agent who sneaks up on a man in a shower and pretends strangles him with a scarf. Yes, it's the males who get topless in this film, including a mass strip scene in the police station when Flannery and club owner Morgana choose an undercover officer to pose as a dancer. And it just so happens he's in a rocky romantic relationship with Flannery. After a near miss when another man just escapes the killer's blades and a false alarm when the cops collar an innocent patron, the next prostitute then gives Flannery a valuable lead. In a novel twist it's a heroine rushing to save a man's life at the end and that's when Morgana's finally revealed as the murderer.
final struggle is above average for a TV misprint, filmed back when actual stunt doubles were used. Back with full exposure, the sex tape scandal, the mass killer decides to get rid of the competition. Wait a minute, we're still one bidder short here. Yo, I'm tired of waiting. Let's start the bidding. 20 grand. That's gotta be uh, option money, right? Against the full price? It's cash. Or uncut Peruvian flake. 30,000. Chump change. 37.5. All right. This is how it is, fellas. I'm not going to take anything less than a hundred grand, and so far you're not within spitting distance. Sixty grand, and you got thirty seconds to say yes. Wait a minute, Grace. Don't let this rug merchant snooker you. I'll go seventy. Eighty. We're talking about a big ticket item here. Some people would kill for this tape. Hundred grand in cash now. All right, now you're talking. I can match that. And then some. You have my full attention, Leonard. Given we've already been introduced to a woman called Deborah Lee Taft who runs a modelling agency and paid a large amount of money to the dead girl, it doesn't take a genius to work out she either is that missing bidder from the auction or is somehow connected to it. And she may be posing as a legitimate businesswoman, but Deborah Lee has a hulking bodyguard named Earl who makes it quite clear they're not keen on a police investigation and the very tone in her attitude suggests she's hiding something. She was a model. I paid her for her time. 19 grand. Well, you say she made $19,000. I'd be interested in knowing where you got your figures. I'll bet you would. And the reason I've got Deborah Lee on my list is that she's a bit of a different villainess in some ways. Rather than the run-of-the-mill psycho we get in a lot of these type of films, we have a businesswoman who's ruthless and not afraid to get her own hands dirty. And when the cops attempt to plant an undercover officer in Deborah Lee's agency, the woman is seen off almost immediately before she can even get to the office. And since Thompson knows there's a leak in the police, he reluctantly accepts Sarah's offer to go undercover, and this leads to a tense meeting with Deborah Lee. Sarah's investigation becomes even more dangerous when she attends a party arranged by Deborah Lee, and pretty soon after that, the missing roommate resurfaces with the all important videotape which Sarah takes possession of, and this leads us into Deborah Lee's completely expected reveal as the murderer. I don't have it anymore, Earl, but I know oh, who does. Just, just give me till lying, tomorrow morning. You're lying. No, wait, wait, wait. Um, um, Come on. Give me a minute. Give me, uh, Sarah. Sarah somebody, you know, the, the lady cop. You gave it to a cop. When does this killing stop? when we get the tape. And Jennifer O'Neill brings a lot of gravity to the performance as Deborah Lee, so it really does feel like she's utterly ruthless. Sarah Dutton. The climax takes place at Sarah's house when the villains show up to retrieve the tape by any means necessary. I bet you didn't know I was on that tape. 
right up there with your father and Connie. I did it as a favor to a valued customer. You think I'm in this for the money? I'm not a blackmailer. I'm a businesswoman. I want the tape. I don't have it. I don't think you quite understand. And it's almost certain that Deborah Lee was the killer in all the sequences. Despite Earl using a shotgun here, the killer had a much slender build and the leather jacket is the same as what Deborah Lee's wearing. 